Today, we're unboxing my new softbox. There. Looking pretty cool so far, eh? Okay, there's a nice little carrying case. Man, this thing is bigger than I anticipated. Anything else in the case? No. All right, so we got this reflective disc, diffusion, a grid, all welcome. This desk is too high up. I'm gonna need to do it on the floor. All right, pretty simple. Wow, that was a super easy setup. Like, super easy. Inner diffuser attached. Pretty good to me. Time for the grid. Want some ASMR real quick? How do you like that? <laughs> We're all set up. Now I'm gonna switch out the soft box I currently have on my light so you can see the difference on my skin, how soft the light is with this one. Slight unanticipated problem. This thing is much bigger than I thought it would be. I just knocked over everything on my desk and broke some stuff. And, uh, I don't know if this is going to suit my room. We might need to do some... <laughs> we might have to do some remodeling here to actually get this to fit in my room. But, uh, this is a lot bigger than my previous one. This is the old diffuser that I had. You know, much smaller. I believe it's like a 24-inch. Uh, this is a beastly... 38 inch not to mention it's like a meter deep so you get super soft light uh, But in this small corner studio setup that I have This might not work. Let's see if I can get it to work Okay, so this is the temporary setup to actually see how the soft light is hitting me the light is now at hundred percent I don't know if this softbox is gonna work in my room with my current light setup. The fact that this softbox is so heavy on the SL60W it just <laughs> It knocked over everything on my desk. It keeps sagging on the light. Uh, I don't know if it was built for this kind of weight on a softbox. So I might need to upgrade to a stronger, more professional light to actually take advantage of this one. But the light is super soft and that is what we want. So I just took the grid off the softbox and as you can see, there's a lot more spill, but it is significantly brighter at the same 100%. It looks really good, it looks really soft, it's lighting me very flatteringly, and I really like how this diffuses light. It looks so clean. The issue for me is the size. <laughs> so the plan is I'm gonna take this diffuser and the light downstairs in the living room where I can actually have the space to take advantage of this brand new diffuser. But before I do that, I want to actually test some stuff with this reflective disc because this is not something you see on other diffusers, especially in this price range. So I wanna know if this is more of a photography related thing and how much it actually changes the quality of light you're getting out of this softbox. So I'm gonna do some lighting tests where I'm just pointing the light against the wall here in this controlled environment. I'm going to do it with the disc this way and then flip it around this way and then no disc and see what the light looks like because I've never seen this in any diffuser before and I wanna know if I should be using it and how I should be using it because I think it's cool. I've never seen this attachment, so I wanna see what that's about. And that was one of my biggest questions about this particular diffuser that I haven't seen on any other YouTube channels. No one really describes what this does or how it interacts with the light. So I wanna figure that out. And hopefully that helps you guys out because no one really seems to know what this does. All right, so after looking at the footage, what I can tell is that this disc does cut out quite a bit of light when you're using it. Even if you have it concave or convex, it's still cutting out quite a bit of light, so I prefer it personally with no deflection disc in there. I think the deflection disc is more for high-powered flashes and photography than it is videography and constant lights. I think when you're using a high-powered flash, it deflects off that disc, deflects all off the sides of the parabolic softbox, and then goes out the front, giving it that super bright but super soft look but with the constant light, you don't have as much power as a flash, 
so that deflection disc doesn't come in very handy because of that lower power constant light is just cutting out significant amounts of light. As you can see from this footage, when we have no deflection disc, it looks the best, it looks the brightest because there's nothing blocking the light. When we use the concave side of the deflection disc, as you can see, it's much more center oriented, but we're also cutting out quite a bit of light, so I'm not going to be using this. Then when we move on to the convex side of things, it also cuts out quite a bit more light, but the spread seems to be a lot more even throughout the frame. It's not more centered focus like the concave version, but I personally am not going to be using this because I don't like the way that the light hits the subject. All right, let's head downstairs into the living room where there's a lot more space and I can set this softbox up properly and use it to its full potential. All right, so this is what I would have with a normal interview setup. I'd have the light on this side, I'd have the mic boomed above my talent, and this is what the light setup would look like when I'm using it in a professional setting. Let me put on a lens I'd actually use during interviews, like a 35 or an 85 or both, and you can see how the light is actually hitting me. So this is what the 85 looks like with this light setup. I think it looks really clean. I think this light looks really soft. I really like how it looks on my skin. It's very flattering. I do wish that I had a brighter light to actually output more light onto my subject because when you start to move this light away, even at 100%, it is so soft and so diffused that you actually need to have it a little bit brighter to actually get the output you want. Versus with my old smaller softbox, I only have it at 70% versus the 100% of the bigger, newer softbox. So that just goes to show that the diffusion is a lot less on this one, but I can have it at a lower power to actually get the output I'm looking for. That being said though, the light is not as soft and flattering on this one as it is on the big soft one. And that's what happens when there's more diffusion. It just looks more flattering. The highlights, the roll off is just a little bit better. There's a little bit more detail in the skin. And that's what happens when you have a bigger light source. It's just smoother, softer, and looks more flattering. All right, so now we're on the 35 mil. And as you can see, I'm using the old smaller soft box. So the light is a little bit harder harsher, but I think this is a good example to show that there is a huge difference between a smaller and larger softbox and what those differences entail. I personally prefer the softness of the larger, more expensive one, but I don't know if it's going to work in my room just because it's so much bigger. The size difference is massive, and for my small room where I just have my entire YouTube setup in the corner, this might not be ideal. So I'm really gonna have to think about whether or not I want to reorganize my entire room to try and fit this softbox into my room and use it as my main source of lighting and diffusion in my YouTube studio, or if I'm just going to continue using the smaller, not as diffuse softbox because it fits in my room much better and maybe only use the soft one for client shoes. So I think this is such a good softbox. It is so soft that that it just, mm. And the fact that this thing is only like 80 or $90 and it competes with things that are 150, 200, $220, is very impressive. This thing is so soft, it looks so good, it comes with a lot of attachments, and that easy collapsible thing makes it so good and so useful. When I set up this softbox, I wanted to murder something. I was this close to throwing this, this softbox away because it was such a pain to insert the rods one by one. The tension wasn't there, sometimes they just pop out. It was so frustrating. And this thing, you saw how easy it was. I just pushed it down and you're good to go. And that makes my life so much easier, not to mention the quality and softness of light that you're getting out of this softbox is so nice. The ease of use with the Velcro all around so you can put the secondary diffusion up as well as the egg crate is just, mmm. I really like this softbox. It is very, very big though. This is the 38 inch and it is deeper than I anticipated. It's about a meter. Uh, deep, so that's why that light is so soft. Usually I had the light between 30 and 65% on this softbox, whereas it is currently at 100% because it's so much softer and it's bouncing around, so you need to have it much higher to actually get more light out of it, but that quality of light is so soft and I really, really like this softbox. But I wanna know what you guys think. Are you guys preferring the larger, softer softbox or the smaller, less soft softbox? That's a lot of softs. Anywho, let me know in the comment section down below which ones you prefer. Let me know if you have any questions. If you're interested in any of the gear I've used in this video, it's always in the description down below, so feel free to browse there if you want to get something like that. My name has been Mark Steiner and I'll see you next time.